Today on OT360, we were in Long Pond, PA recently for the Pocono IndyCar 500. We'll take a look at the action. Tom Lang chats with local track announcer Dow Carnahan. We'll check in on a beautifully restored 1955 GMC pickup and the heartfelt story behind it. We talk with local race car driver Justin Bolton, who packed his bags for North Carolina in pursuit of his dreams. That's coming up on Open Throttle 360. Gentlemen, start your engines. Welcome to Open Throttle 360. I'm Tom Lang. And I'm Trip Clark. And Tom, I'm super stoked about today's show. In particular, this first segment is the first opportunity we've had to send the OT360 crew to Pocono Raceway. My wife and I had a chance to go there back in 1998 and caught Jeremy Mayfield winning his first NASCAR race. Pocono Raceway is one of the few tracks on the NASCAR Sprint Cup circuit that conducts two races over the course of a season. Yep, it is. And we sent our very own Valve train to Pocono for only the second Indy race at the Tricky Triangle since they stopped running there back in 1989. The mountains are frequently a quiet respite for those looking to get away from it all, to enjoy the bountiful gifts of Mother Nature. The Pocono Mountains are no different. This bucolic part of Pennsylvania is home to Americana, impressive sunrises, stunning night skies, and race fans. Several times a year, this mountain resort embraces the screams of fans, the roar of engines, and the excitement of 200 mile an hour racing. Today, it's IndyCar. Indy cars are faster, sleeker, better looking, more exciting, and uh, the open wheel also a little more dangerous. Yeah, we started following Mario from the late 60s when he was running. We've been coming up here since the 70s. And we go out to Indianapolis 500, we've been to Watkins Glen when they raced up there, we've been to Baltimore, and we come up here. Pocono's in the middle of nowhere. The uh, racetrack just had a study done this last year by East Strasburg University that indicated with the two uh, NASCAR races and the IndyCar race that it generated in excess of $250 million of economic impact to the area here in Northeast Pennsylvania. That is equivalent to what a Super Bowl brings to a community and that, that's good news for us. It's great to have IndyCar back, you know, we're for, for a track that was kind of built for and by IndyCar um, and, the, and the Holman family was very instrumental in helping my grandparents who founded Pocono Raceway. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's tremendous to have them back. You know, it's a whole different uh, what we're, than what we've had here for the last 23 years in their absence. So uh, the fans seem to enjoy it. We really enjoy it. I'm a big race fan for IndyCar and, and uh, it's great to have them back. Being a triangle, being so different than every other track, having this long front straightaway, having three corners, opposed to four like every other track and, and each corner being so much different than they are from each other, it makes it much more harder track for the drivers, makes more competitive track and you never know what's going to happen, you know, who's going to cross that start finish line at the end of the day and, and get take those checkers. Well, I'm a mechanical engineer so I read about the technology in these cars all the time. They're very high tech. There's a lot of engineering going on. You can actually feel the sound and appreciate the speed a lot better.
whoever's in my pool. I haven't looked at my pool sheet yet, so whoever's in my pool, that's who I root for. On this day, Juan Pablo Montoya tamed the tricky triangle. The haulers loaded up, the fans headed home, and the chaos of race week will yield to the hushed beauty of the mountains until next time. Lernerville Speedway and with me now is the voice of dirt racing in the Pittsburgh area Dal Carnahan. Dal thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Great to see you, great to see you at Lernerville. Now you not only announce here, you're the announcer at Pittsburgh Pennsylvania Motor Speedway. That's right, that's right. I do both every weekend. How long you been an announcer? Well, I started auto racing announcing back in 1984 so it's been, well, added up, it's been a long time. What got you into the announcing field? Well I work in radio and I love auto racing. I'm just as a kid and don't ask me why because I'm, I'm not quote gearhead and I don't fix my own car or anything like that but uh, there's just something about watching these drivers go around a dirt track they do sideways and just the skill involved. I don't know why, I've just been attracted to it. So uh, I got the opportunity back in the mid 80s, uh, working for a radio station at one of the tracks, Motor Drum Speedway was a dirt track at that time. We went to sell them advertising. And they said, hey, we're gonna need an announcer. And I started uh, for them then and still doing it today. It helps to know the sport. And I knew the sport before I started and I'm a big fan. So, you know, I'm just like anybody else in the grandstands except I'm talking to everybody instead of just talking to the guy to my left or my right. Are there any particular memories or races that stand out for you? Well, there's been a lot. I can remember at uh, Pennsylvania Motor Speedway, the Pittsburgher 100, I think it was like in 1996 or 98. Uh, it rained off and on that day, Sunday, and we finally got the show in that night. And it was one of the best 100 laps race of, lap races I've ever seen. Scott Bloomquist was gonna win it. And uh, Tim Hitt came out of nowhere and passed him, I think with a lap or two to go to win it, brought down the house. Did you ever get the itch to get in a car and go around the track? I've thought about it, but that's about as far as it's gone. I've never uh, never had the opportunity, never really asked for the opportunity. And uh, at this point in my life, I don't think I will ask for the opportunity. I'll bet you've made an awful lot of friends in this business. Oh man, that's probably the one thing that keeps me going is I work with great people, the racers and the race teams. It's not just the drivers, it's the car owners and their pit crews. You get to know them over the years. It's just like a big, Big fraternity, a lot of fun. If it weren't for the people, I probably wouldn't still be doing it. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. I'm thanks. glad to see you guys at Learningville, and thanks for bringing all this great weather. Yeah, th that came with us. <laughs> Whatever it takes. We haven't had a weekend like this all year. We're enjoying it. On Open Throttle 360. A son goes the extra mile for his dad to replicate great memories of an earlier time. We talk with limited late model driver Justin Bolton about what it's like to race at Hickory Motor Speedway. That's next on Open Throttle 360. Country music fans, Chris Higby's new CD depends on you. Be part of the Kickstarter campaign to help Chris record a new CD. Go to ChrisHigby.com to see how you can be a part of making music history. Tires, parts, and service. Tire Town. Looking for a one stop shop for all of your dirt, drag, and street machine needs? Look no further than Hoosier Tire Mid Atlantic and Precise Racing Products. Precise is the leading distributor for Hoosier Racing Tires and VP Racing Fuel for Pennsylvania and Maryland. We also have a wide range of parts and accessories for circle track, drag racing, and street performance. Visit PreciseRacing.com and enter coupon code OT360 to receive a free hat on your next purchase. Precise Racing Products. We sell speed. 
It's the Delaney Honda Summer Clearance Event, now through September 2nd at Delaney Honda. Hurry in to lease a 2014 Honda Civic Sedan CVTLX for $147 a month, or lease a 2014 Honda Accord Sedan CVTLX for $188 a month, or rates as low as 0.9% on select vehicles. Delaney Honda is the area's best location for certified pre-owned Hondas. Visit online at DelaneyHonda.com for other great offers. Hurry, the Delaney Honda Summer Clearance Event ends September 2nd. Delaney, it's all right here. Country music fans, Chris Higby's new CD depends on you. Be part of the Kickstarter campaign to help Chris record a new CD. Go to ChrisHigby.com to see how you can be a part of making music history. Sometimes a car can be a bonding agent in a relationship, or one of the most sentimental gifts that someone can get for a loved one. OT360 recently heard a story about a local man who had one heck of a surprise in store for his dad. When you see a sweet custom car, it's easy to be distracted by the shine of the chrome or the depth of the gorgeous paint job. But like a Picasso or a Rembrandt, there's a story behind these paint jobs. Sometimes it's stories of resurrecting high school memories. Sometimes the stories are even more poignant. Here's one of those stories. My name is Michael Fasciano Jr. I'm from Pittsburgh, PA. And behind me I have a 1955 GMC Stepside pickup truck. The story of this classic pickup dates back to the mid-1950s of the Fasciano family business, when Michael Fasciano Sr. would make his rounds with a handful of tools. Back about 10 years ago, I thought it would really be cool if I could find and restore to its original condition the first pickup truck that my dad ever owned. He had a photo taken against the truck and he mailed it to Italy, to his mother. I had an opportunity when I was in Italy to see that photo. Two years ago, I participated in an auction on the internet and I missed two 1955s. About a week later, I picked up Hemmings Magazine and I saw a picture of a 1955 Seminole Brown, and it was located in Seattle, Washington. Having already missed out on multiple opportunities to snag a rare 55 GMC, Michael Jr. bought this one sight unseen almost 2,500 miles away. I thought it would really be cool for Dad's 83rd birthday. He came down to the office, we had some cake and ice cream, then I walked him outside and he saw the truck, and he was very surprised. I think it was a nice. <laughs> that was the biggest surprise for me to see that truck after 50 years. I remember yesterday I went to buy this truck, $650. <laughs> it was interesting because he was surprised. I could see that he was also very emotional about it. But then I asked him if he wanted to go for a ride, and he said, no, not really. And then he looked, and he said, that's a stick. And I said, yeah, it's a three on the tree. And he said, ah, mine was an automatic. And I think he was just poking fun at me that even though I did get a replica of the truck, that his was an automatic. I know you were it's upset okay. that it wasn't automatic, but it's hey, they were hard right. to come by. So. No so. <laughs> Being it was the wrong color, not only the wrong color, the interior was wrong. I uh, needed to research someone local in Pittsburgh that would be able to restore it. When he finally got her home, he needed to find a place to bring her back to life. In fact, bring it back to its life in the old days. That place was Bruce Harvey Pro Comp. What sold me on Bruce was number one, he was hands-on, he came to look at the truck personally. I knew the truck was a turquoise in color and it had a creamish egg white roof and interior and he went to work. He took this truck completely apart. That was the only way it could be done. He had to totally disassemble it, paint everything and put everything back together again. What was important to the whole process was to get the name on the door in its original condition the way it was in the photo when my dad took the picture next to the truck. That picture was dated. The picture that I used was dated 1959. So if I was in the truck, I had to be three or four years old. I was born in 56. Yeah. So, I mean, there may have been occasion, but I honestly, I don't remember being in the truck. You don't remember, but you were in that truck. I'm sure we were there, yeah. What Bruce was able to do was more than just restore an old pickup truck. What Bruce restored were priceless memories of a proud Italian family three generations deep. The same work that was put into bringing this old 55 back 
exemplifies the same work ethic that built Michael Fasciano Contracting. Still to come, race car driver Justin Bolton got his start racing at Lake Erie Speedway and transplanted to Hickory, North Carolina in order to hone his skills and pursue his dream. We're going to talk with him next. Don't go far. OT360 will be right back. Heads up racing. Run what you brought. Street racing without the jail time. Flashlightdrags.com. It's Delaney Chevrolet's last month of summer sales event going on now through September 2nd. Lease a 2014 Chevy Equinox for $223 a month or buy it now for $22,050. Or lease a 2014 Chevy Silverado for $369 a month or buy it now for $32,047. Visit online at DelaneyChevrolet.com to view our 2014 model year and specials on remaining in-stock 2014s. Hurry, the Delaney Chevrolet last month of summer sales event and September 2nd. Chevrolet, find new roads. Delaney, it's all right here. Family owned and operated racing enterprise specializing in restoration work, chassis setup, transmission work, hard to find parts, and vintage car sales. Zappa Racing is the place to go for your road racing needs. Visit ZappaRacing.com and find out what the fighting bee is all about. Zappa Racing. When it comes to luxury and performance, Cadillac still sets the standard. Arnold Palmer Motors in Latrobe offers the best of Cadillac luxury, including the all-new 2014 ATS, a world-class compact luxury sedan that redefines the Cadillac experience. The Cadillac CTS, Motor Trend's 2014 Car of the Year, is in a class by itself for design, safety, and engineering excellence. Visit Arnold Palmer Motors in Latrobe today and test drive the best that Cadillac has to offer. Heads up racing. Run what you brought. Street racing without the jail time. Flashlightdrags.com. Committing yourself to racing obviously requires a lot of personal sacrifice. Pretty much eating, sleeping, and breathing the local race circuit. Sometimes it even means uprooting and leaving home to dive into where the competition is as good as it gets. Hi, I'm Justin Bolton. I'm 19 years old. Originally from Greensburg, Pennsylvania. And about a year ago, I moved down to Charlotte, North Carolina, and now race late model stock cars at Hickory Motor Speedway. I go to UNC Charlotte, and I study mechanical engineering in their motorsports concentration. Really, ever since we started racing um, in go-karts, I've looked at, you know, what my future could be. I've really focused on, you know, the motorsports part of it. Working on the cars is kind of my plan B, but I just enjoy being around the tracks and being around the cars, being in the shop and being around people in racing that I can relate to. Yeah, you know, a lot of people would you know, assume that it'd be a tough decision to, you know, move away from home and go down to Charlotte, North Carolina, you know, by myself and try and be on a team or a driver or whatever you have of it. Honestly, it wasn't really that hard for me to do. For me, it was kind of just my passion and, you know, what I've always wanted to do. Hickory Motor Speedway being there for 60 plus years definitely is an honor to be able to race there with all the, all the NASCAR champions and people in the Hall of Fame that have raced there and won there. It's just such a privilege to run a track with such character and everything else, you know, between the bumps on the track to still stopping for funerals. And they've done that all along in their whole history. Really the only ritual that I have, we take a picture before the race with, you know, something of Hickory in the background and that's always seemed to give us some kind of luck. It's usually at the same spot every week, so we end up having 30 of the same pictures at the end of the season. It sounds silly, but having the experience in the rain, it definitely improves myself as a driver. But you know, there's, there's some people out there that can't do that. Once they lose their focus, they're, they're done for the rest of the night. So being able to you know, lose that focus and then come back, it definitely helps me as a driver uh, mentally. 
Yeah, the iRacing.com motorsport simulation is really used as a training tool for most drivers. They've laser scanned practically all of the Sprint Cup Series tracks on there now. You can go to Daytona, like Dale said, he'll be expecting a bump into turn one and then he'll go down to turn one and he'll feel that bump exactly like it is in real life. So we can't go to the track every day and test and test and test. You know, that'll cost way too much money and just tires and stuff like that. But on iRacing, you know, it's free. I come home from school and, you know, I'll test a cup car at, um, you know, whatever track, wherever we're coming from. And, uh, you know, that'll usually take up most of my night. The future for myself in racing is, you know, definitely dependent on marketing partners and everything like that. We've had a great connection with Chanel at Best Western and they've come on board to help us for this season and it's been a huge honor to carry the Best Western logo week in and week out. Well, different from most 19 year olds just from the fact that, you know, I'm able to have a passion for something and not only have that passion but be able to go out there and you know, do it. It kind of falls back on, you know, my parents. They've supported me a bunch through all of this. I feel like right now, you know, I am living my dream right now because of, you know, just being able to go to a racetrack and, you know, hop in a car that's capable of winning races. And, you know, not only that, but to do it at such a historic place like Hickory Motor Speedway, that's not only an honor, but it's just, you know, eye-opening as to what an experience this is. to come. Drivers and racers from all over the area submitted their GoPro footage. See if yours makes the show. With more than three decades of experience and 130 suppliers under one roof, Luby's Chevy Warehouse is your one-stop restoration shop for sheet metal, brakes, emblems, chrome, and more. Need restoration parts for Chevy Impala, Bel Air, or Biscayne? We've got a catalog for that. We've got parts for Tri-5 and Chevy trucks, Chevelle, Monte Carlo, and El Camino, Chevy Nova, and Camaro. It's all at Luby's Chevy Warehouse. Call today for a free catalog or visit us at a swap meet near you. When it comes to luxury and performance, Buick takes a backseat to no one. Arnold Palmer Motors in Latrobe features the best of Buick, including the 2014 Buick Verano. Verano represents a new generation of mid-sized Buick luxury by blending performance-ready styling, comfort, and advanced IntelliLink technology. Visit Arnold Palmer Motors today and experience the 2014 Buick Verano for yourself. It's the Delaney Subaru last month of summer sales event going on now through September 2nd. Stop in for these great deals. Lease a 2015 Subaru Legacy for $229 a month for 36 months. Or lease a 2015 Subaru Outback for $279 a month for 36 months. Visit online at DelaneySubaru.com for other great offers, like 2014 model year-end specials on remaining in-stock 2014s. Hurry at the Delaney Subaru last month of summer sales event and September 2nd. Delaney, it's all right here. Seven, get the gear at PennStateClothes.com. Shirts, hoodies, caps, jerseys, and sweats. PennStateClothes.com. The family clothes line with more in store. At Penn State Clothes, you get more, more, more. 24 7, get the gear at PennStateClothes.com.
Tom, watching the Justin Bolton piece, uh, I give huge props to anybody who's so determined to chase their dream that they're willing to uproot and leave their home and family and friends all at a chance of hitting the big time. Well, he may have left home, but I guarantee you his family and friends, they were with him every step of the way. Yeah, I know they are. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Open Throttle 360. We'd like to know what you think of the show. Send us an email at info at openthrottle360.com. And as always, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And keep sending us your GoPro footage so you too can be part of the show. Trip, you know why a chicken coop has two doors? If it had four, it'd be a chicken sedan. <laughs> yeah. Special thanks to Dan Fowler at Fast Company for hosting us today. We'll see you next time. Next week on Open Throttle 360, we check out a Chevy S10 that'll really rattle your cage. We're heading to Greene County for a little flashlight drag action. Know what COPO stands for? You'll find out next week. We talk with local racing journalist and overall nice guy, Don Gamble. We head to Shorty's Hollow for some mud bogging, and as always, we go pro. That's all coming up on the next OT 360.